Well, good luck. Okay. This is uh, a chapter all about uh, triangles again. We're going to talk about all the cool things that we can use triangles for. And um, let's begin with this uh, perpendicular bisector thing. So let me get out my compass. Remember drawing the perpendicular bisector doing the construction? You guys remember that? So we have a segment. And it has to be a segment, remember. It can't be a line. We can't do, we can't bisect a line, can we? Not a line. Yeah, not a line. We can do a segment we can bisect, but not a line. Okay. So, um, if we just, if we just make our compass go more than halfway, gosh, I, I put that too close to the top of my paper. Let's try this again. So I've got my segment here. Okay. So I start on one end. And I just make my compass more than halfway. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter where. And I do the same arc from both sides. And this, from this intersection to here, okay, that gives us our midpoint. So that's the midpoint of segment AB. Right there. And also, if I draw this line in, it is the perpendicular bisector of AB. And what that means is it's perpendicular to AB and it goes through the midpoint, it bisects it, okay? So that's all cool and everything, but how do we know? How do we know that that's the midpoint? Just because I've made these two arcs, What do you think? It looks like it, doesn't it? Anybody looking at it and saying, nope, Mr. Collard, you're full of crap. That's not the, per you, we all agree that it looks like the perpendicular bisector? Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, Well, tell me, tell me about, uh, I'll put a point C up here for a second. Tell me about segment AC and segment BC. Yeah, they're congruent. We made them that way. We constructed them that way, didn't we? By making the arc the same from both sides, didn't we? Okay. Um... Tell me about, uh, here, we'll put a point D down here. Tell me about uh, BD, that segment right there, and AD. Are they congruent? Yeah, we made them that way, didn't we? Plus, would you say that this is an isosceles triangle? And this one's an isosceles triangle? Okay. But I say, I say this, this triangle right here, see it? And that one right there? I say they're congruent. How do I know they're congruent? There you go, side, side, side. Well, they share side DC, don't they? So those two triangles are congruent. And that means that all of their corresponding angles are congruent. And what about, what about this one on top compared to this one on bottom? Are they congruent? Yeah. How about, how about this one here in comparison to that one there? Are they congruent? Yeah, and if we just start looking at this, if we if we take this one on top, this one on bottom, we can say, well, these two angles have to be congruent, these two angles have to be congruent, you know, these, these two have to be congruent, these two have to be congruent. Pretty soon we have all these congruent triangles, don't we? Um, these two angles right here, they're corresponding parts of congruent triangles, aren't they? And they form a linear pair. So if they're congruent and they form a linear pair, what do they have to be? Yeah, they have to be right angles. So by doing the construction the way we do it, we're sure that we're forming all these congruent triangles, see? And with the congruent, with the, all those triangles like that, well, um, then we're sure about what's going on. Like AM 
and BM, they're corresponding parts of congruent triangles, aren't they? So that means M is the midpoint. Everyone following so far? Yeah. Okay. So whenever we're doing construction, that's what's going on. Okay. We're doing the construction in a way that we're forming congruent triangles. And then the parts that we want to be corresponding parts of congruent triangles, that's that's what we're that's what we're using it for. So let's let's take a look at this first theorem, 6.1. I'm on page 302. Are you guys? In a plane, if a point lies on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, then it is equidistant from the end points of the segment. So see this point C right here? It's on the perpendicular bisector. Is it equidistant from A and from B? You're all good with that. How about point D? You all good with that? Okay, but what about this? What about this point right here, point E? Is it equidistant? from the endpoints of the segment. Yeah. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. How do you know? If I form a triangle here and here, are these two triangles congruent? Yeah. And are these corresponding parts of congruent triangles? Yeah. They are. What if I put a point here? Is it equidistant from the endpoints? What if I put a point way down here? So a point anywhere along the perpendicular bisector, doesn't matter how far up, how far down, you know, I can come way down here, whatever it is, okay? That point is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. And it's all because those two sides are corresponding parts of congruent triangles. That makes sense? Okay, so that's our first theorem. Any point on a perpendicular bisector is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. Good? Okay. Now, the next one. Guess what it is? The converse, right? The converse. So let's say now I've got a segment. <clears throat> we'll call it AB again. And I've just got some point up here and all I know about that point is it is the same distance to A as it is to B. What do we know about point C? It's the same, if I tell you it's the same distance from A as it is to B, what else do we know about point C? If I drew the perpendicular bisector, would it go, would it go like this? So here's the midpoint. If I drew a perpendicular bisector, would it go like that? Would it go, would it go like this? Would it go like that, possibly? Okay, yeah, C, C is on the perpendicular bisector. If you have a point that's equidistant from the endpoints of a segment, it's on the perpendicular bisector. So if we were to draw the perpendicular bisector, it would most definitely go through point C. So that's just the converse of that perpendicular bisector theorem. Okay, so we have two theorems. Uh, what was the first one? In a plane, if a point lies on the perpendicular bisector, it's equidistant from the endpoints. And in a plane, if a point is equidistant from the endpoints of a segment, then it is on the perpendicular bisector. Remember when we first started talking about the converse and the inverse and the contra. Remember all those? <coughs> How many theorems have we had since then where not only was the theorem true, but the converse was true? A lot, right? Um, just about every one we've talked about, we've talked about its converse as well. Okay, so we kind of, we did the, the proof already. So let's look over on page 303, kind of using this theorem a little bit. So you're going to have to look at a figure, like on A, and you see, oh, let's see, uh, SQ, is it the perpendicular bisector of RP? Yeah. It is, isn't it? Okay. So what do you know about SP and SR? 
There you go, they're congruent. So SR is 6.8 units long, isn't it? So you have to recognize what's going on, and, and there you go. Let's look down at B for a minute. Um, H, is it on the perpendicular bisector? Yeah, because it's equidistant from E and G, isn't it? And then FH goes, it's perpendicular. So what do you guys think about the little segment EF? Yeah, it's congruent to FG, isn't it? It's the midpoint of that segment, isn't it? Okay. This, what do you guys think? Is this difficult? Once you, once you understand what the theorem, if you remember what the theorem says, it's not a big deal. How about down there on, the, on C? Are 3x plus 14 and 5x, are they equal? Are those two segments equal to one another? Yeah. Uh, BD is the perpendicular bisector, so CD and AD are congruent. There you go. Okay. Um, example 2, solving a real-life problem. Uh, is there enough information in the diagram to conclude that point N, you guys all find point N? lies on the perpendicular bisector of KM. So we're just looking at the, the picture. Are, K, are KL and ML congruent? How do you know? Marked in the picture. All right. So, so L is the midpoint, right? It is the midpoint. Um, is uh, L LN, is it perpendicular to KM? Yeah, we don't know, do we? We have that, we have that bridge going across. <coughs> you guys ever seen a bridge like that before? There used to be one up near my, my place when I was a kid. So this comes down like this. This one comes down like this. Then we got this vertical coming down like that, and we know these two are congruent. But there's just no way to know that we have a right angle right here, is there? Like if we if we knew that KN and MN were congruent, would this have to be a right angle? Yeah. Right. Or if this were a right angle, we'd know the, these two were congruent, but we just don't have enough information in this case. Okay. All right, turn to the page. Let's talk about angle bisectors now instead of perpendicular bisectors. So I'm just going to construct an angle bisector, and then we're going to talk about how I know it's an angle bisector. How you know. Angle A, B, C. Okay, so I'm going to construct um, the angle bisector. So let's think about how we do this. You guys remember? You haven't done this one for a while, have you? So I come here and I make this arc. Ah, there we go. Like that. I should have called this point A and this point C. Okay, so when I make that arc, what do, what do you guys know about BA and BC? Okay, they're congruent. Now I, I come over here at point A, and it doesn't matter where out here, okay? But I, I make an arc again. But then when I come down to point C, I use that same hole, I make the same arc there, don't I? Okay, everyone see that okay? So now, usually what I do next is I start right there, and I draw in the angle bisector like this. There's my angle bisector. Okay, so let's talk about why it's the angle bisector. So I usually don't draw this segment, but I'm gonna I'm gonna draw segment CD in for you, and I'm gonna draw segment AD in for us. I'm gonna do that first. What do we know about AD and CD? Okay, they're congruent. Okay, now I'm going to draw in the angle bisector. So let's talk about how I know that this angle and this angle are congruent. Okay? 
So can you all look at angle B, A, D? Can you all look at that one on top? Can you all look at angle B, C, D? What do you think about those two triangles? They're congruent. How do we know? Yeah, side, side, side. See, we know A, B, and B, C are congruent. We know A, D, and D, C are congruent. And then what about B, D? Reflexive properties, congruent to itself, obviously, right? So we have side, side, side congruence of the two triangles. And if the two triangles are congruent, what do you know about their corresponding parts? So corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, aren't they? Is that what you're doing, Aubrey? <laughs> what do you think? Every single construction that I've shown you this year, okay, this is how it works. I'm not just making these arcs randomly, you know, there, there's a reason why we're doing it that way. And we're forming congruent triangles and we know that the corresponding parts of them are congruent and that's how we're making the constructions work. Okay, so you can prove that a construction actually works. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, let's talk about the angle bisector theorem now. So let me draw another one. So that's why it works, we know. So now if I have an angle, and I have an angle bisector, which I'm not going to construct, I'm just going to eyeball it this time. Is that okay? Little eyeballery right there. Okay. So that's the angle bisector. Now remember, on the segment bisector, any point on it was equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. Well, this doesn't have a segment to be equidistant from. But any point on the angle bisector is equidistant from the sides of the angle. So if I draw a segment over here at a right angle, and then I draw a segment over here, at a right angle, these two segments will be congruent. Doesn't matter where I start. I can start, I can go right here. If I come to the side of the angle at a right angle, if I come to the side of this one at a right angle, now you notice the blue ones are longer than the red, aren't they? They don't have anything to do with red, but these two blue ones, they're congruent. So any point along the angle bisector is equidistant from the sides of the angle. And if you're going to measure the distance, it has to be at a right angle, doesn't it? Okay, it can't be, like if I drew, if I drew this in, would that be a distance to the side of the angle? It's longer, isn't it? Are you sure? Definitely? Absolutely? Positively? Yeah? How are you sure? You just know? What's longer? A, B, or A, C? AC is longer. Are you sure? What if what if I draw what if I draw that one in? What's the shortest segment there? AB. What if I? What's the shortest segment now? Uh, can I draw a segment that goes from point A to this line and make it shorter than AB? No. That's absolutely the shortest, isn't it? If you look at it, see our right triangle right here? See the right triangle? You see how AD is the hypotenuse and AB is a leg? In a right triangle, what's longer, the hypotenuse or a leg? Yeah, the hypotenuse is always going to be longer, isn't it? Okay? So that's, that's how that theorem works out. We're already out of paper. Okay. Uh, okay, so what about the converse? You have an angle. 
Okay, I've got this point out here like this, and if I if I go at a right angle like that, and I come over here at a right angle, those two segments are congruent. What can you tell me about point A? It's on the what? I mean the bisector angle. What? There you go. Everybody say it. It's on the what? Yeah, that's right. Ashlyn, did you say it? Mm -hmm. Uh on the angle bisector, okay? So what can you tell me about these two angles? Okay, so that's weird though. We have this picture, you got point A here, uh, A, B, A, C are marked congruent, and from that much information, you guys can tell me, hey, these two angles are congruent. That's kind of cool, right? Let's look at the examples. Let's look at example three there for a minute. Same same one we just talked about. Same one we have drawn here. Um, JG and JH are both seven units long. One angle there at F is 42. What's the other one going to be? It's 42. There you go. Uh, the one right below it. SQ is the angle bisector. They're marked congruent. What do you know about 5X and... 6x subtract 5. There you go. Okay. Um, so there's the converse of the theorem. Um, let's look at the soccer player on the top of the next page. Uh, a soccer goalie's position relative to the ball and go pulse. This is like my entire knowledge of soccer, by the way. I know nothing about it other than when something exciting, ha exciting happens, it's against the rules. Have you ever noticed that? No? Who plays soccer here? When something exciting happens, Logan, is it against the rules? Pretty much. All right. Anyway, uh, position relative to the ball and the go post forms a con congruent angles, as shown. What? See the two little red marks? Yeah. All right. Will the goalie have to move further to block a shot toward the right goal post R or the left goal post L? Is it the same distance either way? It is, isn't it? <clears throat> is that a smart place to be if you're the goalie? Is that where you want to be? You don't want to. You don't want to have to move twice as far to one side as the other side, right? Unless the guys like can only kick to one side of the goal, right? Okay. Anyway, there soccer lesson. Um. Uh, okay, last bit. Writing equations for perpendicular bisectors. Write an equation of the perpendicular bisector of the segment with these two endpoints. Oh! P, negative 2, 3. Q, 4, 1. You've got to write an equation of a line that goes through the midpoint of this segment at a right angle. I just saw a lot of eyes roll back in your heads and you, a lot of head shaking. That sound horrible? What do we do today? Did you guys mostly did that right? First shot, right? Two point. We need two points, right? We need two points to be able to come up with the equation of this line. What do you, what do you think one of those two points might be? If we're going to draw the, if we're going to write an equation for the perpendicular bisector of this segment. I think we might want to know which point? Midpoint. The midpoint? Who thinks we might need the midpoint? All right. Can we find the midpoint? Yeah. Let's do it. Midpoint. Midpoint formula. Okay, let's find the midpoint of these two x coordinates, negative 2 and 4. How do we find the midpoint there? Come on. Oh, I see you guys glancing over at the midpoint formula. Good job. Add them together and divide by 2. Yeah, we find the average of the x's. Add the y's together, divide by 2. It's 
So this is 2, isn't it? 2 over 2? So 1. This is 4 over 2. So that's 2. Hey, we got a point. Right? Can we find another point on this line? Let's, let's think about this on a graph for a second. So we've got negative 2, 3. And we have 4, 1. So there's our segment. And we're saying 1, 2, 1, 2 is the midpoint. So this is P, this is Q. Here's our midpoint right there. That look like the midpoint to you guys? Yeah. Y'all happy with that? Okay, can we find another point on this line? How are you going to do that? Slope? Oh, okay. So you, got, you figured it out. We're not going to find a point. We're not going to find another point along this line until we actually have the equation or we have the slope of it, okay? But look, can we find the slope here? Can we find the slope of this segment? Isn't it down 2 over 6? Now if we, if we use the slope formula, y subtract y over x subtract x we end up with 2 over negative 6. Now I said I said down 2 over 6. Is that the same thing? Down. How about uh, down 1 over 3? Yeah. So we're going down 1 over 3. So the slope of this line, down 1 over 3. What's the slope of our perpendicular line? Yeah. The slope of this line's got to be up three over one. Okay, so now we got a point, got a point right there, and we got a slope. Can we write an equation? We can, can't we? So we can say y subtract our y coordinate equals the slope times x subtract our x coordinate. You're not going to leave it that way, are you? Cheyenne, are you going to leave it in point slope form? No? What are you going to change it to, guys? Slope intercept. Let's see if that makes sense. Is, is negative 1, ooh, negative 1 look like the y intercept in my case? Yeah. Eh, my graph's pretty horrible, isn't it? If you did that on a piece of graph paper, I think we'd look better. Up 3 over 1, up 1, 2, 3 over... Oh, there we go. We're good, right? Okay. That's a lot of math. How do you feel about that? I saw some eye rolling earlier. What do you, what do you think, Michael? I saw your eyes roll. You going to be okay with that? Maybe, but I'm not fond of it. Okay, not, not fond of it, but can do it. Yeah? Okay. All right. Uh, here we go. Welcome back, everyone. I have no idea how far you're going to get today, so work hard. We'll look at it at the end of class when the bell rings and see what we need to do. Okay? Okay.